my friends and welcome to another episode of Try Bonsai. It's your boy Bana and today my friends we are going to deal with this ficus. Ooh, ew, wow. Now this is one of the ficuses that I got from my good friend Evelyn and I left it you know to do what it does and grow and whatnot and what happened is that this ficus gave us an aerial root that went to ground and the branch that it is it is adjoined to has thickened up quite a lot so what are we doing today today we are going to do we are going to defoliate this entire tree let's look at the branch structure let's prune what we don't want keep what we want and then we are going to repot this into a shallower concrete pot that i've painted yellow yay no there's an additional bonus with regards to this ficus because this ficus seems to be growing next to or on a rock to say that i know exactly what it is i can't so let's do some investigation and see what that is let me bring you in closer to take a, a deeper look at this tree and then let me just go what do you say so this is the ficus and as you can see we have shoots coming out all over which to me is a sign of healthy growth on this arm tree and there are a lot of aerial roots in between and all over on this it also has a, a very interesting shape let me try to move away these branches there's a very interesting shape where it seems as though aerial roots grew around making something of a feature along the trunk of the tree and here at this point you could see the rock that i'm speaking of here which is a very nice feature that i do not want to lose at all so we're going to take our time and deal with this ficus today so as i said i'm going to defoliate and come back and look at the branch structure and then we're going to repot this tree hopefully we could do all of this in the daylight because i know i like to work late i don't know why <laughs> i do not know why so i'm not going to bore you guys with the defoliation process of this you know when we come back we're just going to look at the at the root at the branch structure of this this uh um, this tree yeah so hold a second i'll be right back I finished the full eating this tree and I'm sure it took me more than 10 minutes. So, friends, what is happening you now is that you are seeing the branch structure of this tree and there is a bit of wire here that I need to get off because the wire has embedded itself ooh, into the into the tree and i saw more wire than this somewhere about yes here it is the wire has started melding itself into the tree as it as it were and as a matter of getting it off so it is off now and now we could look at this as a piece of work to be done and wow olia this nice too bad in a way this is a nice nice specimen so i'm gonna bring you guys in closer to see what i'm talking about so there's a branch coming down here as you can see another one coming here to add some definition because it's a 
semi-cascading type of a structure. So this is the body of the tree, which comes up, and it's a series of aerial roots that have helped form this composition and the beauty in what this um, particular tree is. As you can see the rock clearly now, and these striations across that wants to look as though it was either twisted or these were roots that <clears throat> melded into the the trunk as it were to give it that kind of a beautiful look this composition my friends is quite nice it is very very nice and as i go around you could see where the aerial roots are coming down to give that definition to this tree so what we have to do now is make some major decisions are we going to keep this as is and if not what are we taking away from this tree so let's get to that before the night really and truly comes yeah now to be quite honest my friends i'm looking at it from a 360 standpoint and i don't know that i want to take away too much rather than not rather than there are some branches that need to go yes but i'm not sure and i have to really look at this to see which major branches i want to remove from this composition now these weren't naturally done there was some wire work as you would have seen before i removed some wire that was left but there was some wire work that went into creating this composition and what i have to what i have to decide on is what is the front of this tree or where would i want the front to be and as i say that I am discovering more wire that needs to, that has been anchored, that needs to come off of the material. So as I was saying, I need to under, I need to pick a front for this tree as it moves in and out of your focus. I think this is a good front for it. Let me step back and look at it. So, why I would possibly use this as the front? You have this branch coming here that could create something of an apex here. You already have this here. You have something here in the background. And you have this point here. Now, this may not necessarily, and you're not seeing what i uh, talking about. So, let me adjust the camera for you so, to see. If I were to pick this as the front, it showcases the rock here, right? All of the aerial roots coming down. You have this um, layer here, this nice development here. Let me go I'm going away from you all. You have here on top this crown created this back here and you have this developing here on the side now we could move this away completely and leave this to come down into these various crowns or separations right but i kind of like this a bit for now i like where this is giving a little bit of a, you know, some kind of a story here, a crown um, set up here. But this, to the bottom here, I am not sure about. I think it might be a bit distracting for the tree. Now, if I were to use this side, as I dance around with this aerial root, if I were to use this, as the front 
Then we have this crown here. We have this major apex on top here. We have this still here playing a, a pretty good role as it were right here. You have this to the back here. Let me see how it looks. It adds a bit of body to the composition. But this is still an eyesore in my humblest of views. So, is to pick which one is the better front. This is a pretty good front. I could remove everything that is going into the um, into the body of the tree, exposing the trunk a bit more, the beauty of the trunk a bit more, removing this to the bottom here. And, uh, well, I'll have to re either remove this aerial root or create the same style that has been continue, sorry, not create, but continue the same style that has been happening with this um, composition over the years. So, with that said, that was a lot of talk, with that said, let's get to removing the unwanted branches. Yep. So, my friends, as Nigel Saunders says, big cut coming up. As I bring forward my ratchet pruners to make sure and get this as flush as possible. Three, click, and that's it. It is off. Now this could be planted as a cutting. This is a potential cutting. And if it could root, it could form something of a windswept by itself. So I'm not going to discard this too much. Let me put this in a little bit of water to soak. And let's continue working. Let's clean up this cut a bit for a better healing point and as I said what I could do I could continue the design by wrapping these aerial roots and coming back down to you know further accentuate this design so let's continue working my friends because we don't want to be out here too 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 late so we're following we following the design and if you look at the back here right you look at the back here i can reduce this because i don't want it to go too far out taking away this bottom piece Cutting back this piece here. I want to remove the straight bits because I would like to keep some bit of character to this. And that is all I would do. Actually, let me reduce this. And reduce this and this is all I would do to this for now leaving that there now if at the end or in future it doesn't work out I'm gonna remove it it's gonna be an ugly scar but if I remove it properly it will heal over nicely now there were some scars that were left that has to be cut back so that it could heal over properly yeah then we have this branch here let's follow this here coming up and keep what we want get rid of what we do not want so there's a dead bit welcome back my friends um <laughs> this is the number 
two, I skipped a day. A lot of things have been happening. And now what I've done is the original rock that it was planted on is not fitting. And so I had this collected piece of material. And let me bring you in closer. Because so my friends, this bit of collected material is what I'm using as the new rock for this planting to go on. And there are a lot of roots that don't necessarily get in line, but I left this plant soaking for a couple of days trying to figure this out. And now that I have some kind of an idea, I'm hoping that it wasn't left too long and that I've not lost any branches. So this piece of material was collected by the um, <coughs> by the beach, and it is a kind of clay sand kind of a something. It's not the most wholesome, but it serves a really very nice purpose, and it looks really very nice. Could I have used this for something else? Yes, I could have, but. This is where I see it making a lot of sense right now. And as you can see, there are some cut points that need to be cleaned up. I'll get to that at some point. Right now, what I want is for this planting to take off, to catch itself and take off. So what I'm going to do is, as you see, I fitted some of the roots. I fitted the roots as best as I could into some of the crevices of the rock and around and i'm going to try to get them inside there fill this up with some dirt and try my best to secure these roots on the rock with either cling wrap or some sphagnum moss so let's see how that goes yeah there we go so my friends what you see me doing here is trying my best to place these roots between the crevices so that they could grow and hold on to the rock. The rock has a lot of nice groove state. Now, obviously there are some that are not going to make it and are trying to remove the ones that definitely not going to make it and keep the ones that could potentially make the grade. I'm gonna miss some things this might may or may not work out as I am envisioning it thus far, but we tried and we're going with it. Yeah? So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna fill the pot with some soil, then we're gonna get some sphagnum moss and some cling wrap and see which is the best to you know hold that moisture so that these all of these roots survive and we get new roots from this and a beautiful tree. All right, there we go. Okay, so let me bring you in for a closer look on what I did. As you can see, I applied sphagnum moss to the base of these aerial roots. And yes, I know there are a lot of aerial roots that could have been removed. But over time, as I said before, room wasn't built in a day and I am no expert. What I'm trying to accomplish is one for this beautiful specimen of ficus to survive and then we will continuously work on the aesthetics and the beauty of it. So first and foremost, I want them roots and them to survive. Now as you can see inside here, there's a counter sink inside here, but that's okay because there are some roots. Yeah, and as they thicken up, 
hopefully over time, they would ideally grip the rock. Now, when the rock is established, what I will do, I will remove this very sharp edge that you see in here to make it look a bit more natural. And I probably should have had some roots coming down on this side. But all of that we could tend to in the future. Let's see how it goes. You know, as I said, <coughs> I am concentrating on the survival of this tree. So, let me know what you think in the comments. Okay, folks, as I, as I was reminded yet again, just a moment ago, that I need to invest in a camera because my device is overheating, especially when the sun is out. Probably that's why I do things in the night time. I want to take the opportunity to say thank you so very, very much for joining me here on Tribe Bonsai. Um, <clears throat> if you have not subscribed as yet, Hey, now is a good time to do so. We we'll say, give boy a little support now, man. You know, click that like button. Um, share, share, share. Let's build this channel. You know, if you know someone that will benefit from what I do, share it away. And something that I've noted that I did not say, and I'm going to say no. When I was, when I started doing this body of work, I hit a snag in the road where I wasn't sure. And what I did was that I stepped back for a, a couple minutes, well, probably a day or two, to really trick, take in the piece of material and see what was best for it. I experimented with different pots. As you can see, there's another pot here. There's an unpainted, handmade concrete pot here as well. I experimented with a lot of different things and I experimented with a couple different pieces of stone and this to me my friends is the best fit I like it I like it a lot and I'll go in with this I made some artistic choices and that is my story and I'll stick in things so on that note take care my friends always remember be good to yourself spider web be good to others. Treat people how you want to be treated. And remember that our climate is our responsibility. We have an opportunity to change what is happening. So, well, let me do that now. So that it not only benefit us, but it will also benefit the many generations to come. All right? <laughs> On that note, take care, guys. Bye.